Welcome to Presence Dialogues, and I'm your host, Joe Diano. A Presence Dialogue is an approach to communication in which participants tune into a frequency of consciousness, a quality of listening beyond the personal level with the accent on the novelty of the present moment. We tap into a field in which we are at best conduits for the deeper intuitive intelligence of the heart. And this is a series, this is actually the third in a series with Anam on the word. And the last one we did ended with the sixth stage in, in, this, in the eight to 10, or however many stages there are in this path. We ended on the sixth stage of the word, which is the overall title for the series. And um, you can, I would advise you to watch that particular interview, that dialogue, um, on Joe Diamo YouTube's Presence Dialogues, and find the one, the second one in the series on the Word, and this will be the third one. So, hello, Anna. Hello, I already have a way to interview you. <laughs> you have a way to interview me? Mm -hmm. ah. Yes. Ask you when you say the word, what do you mean by that? Yes. Now, the first one, it gave a little explanation of the word. And uh, since the whole thing is about the word, I'm not going to necessarily encapsulate what my understanding of the word is totally. The stages are not about the word. Right. I mean, that's a misnomer. So I, I'll, I'll uh, just encourage us to know that we ended. In, went into a segment about how you arrive at a way to gain access to the word. Right. You can't do it from here, from the turned down witness side of mind that's looking through the lens of our superior senses, you know, more, more our named mind body way of thinking and looking at things. So the word is almost intended for us not to know even what that is precisely about until we're in love and then the word starts to entertain a way to manifest itself in us, not by language alone, but by the condensed energy that manifests directly in us, through us. Then indeed our language will be caught up by the fire language, the tongue, the good, the way of motivating the energy to pronounce itself alive and in the current of the holy now. It's a big meaning. What is this word upon the word? Any causative energy is stuck. And so it demands of you to know how to be holy word and not mental word if you're going to cause your mind body to be of the agency of divine use of the agency of divine power the agency of divine goodness it's a hard topic he chose a big one i did yes, a big yeah. one so if you don't have you're going oh, oh i don't understand it believe me it's a <laughs> tricky one to do any kind of supporting that. Yes. Other than Thank speak you. your truth carefully, and you might be diagnosed by the reality that is beyond our mind as someone who's willing to know reality and not the fib or the hope that we try on. And then you might start to feel like you're being downloaded into, at least by segments of divine whole thought, whole reality, whole code sometimes we can call it, whole truth, the, the more poignant meaning of truth that continues on and on and on and upon the truth, all laws come to be and everything less than the law vanishes. So just to <laughs> recap a little, you know, so the six stages aren't the six stages of the word, but there's sort of stages 
that naturally flow from each other that allow one to become something aligned, aligned with in a, in, a, in a vehicle of the word without, hopefully without any overlays on it so that it can speak through us more purely. Nice. So therefore, we're not trying to define the word so much as just point to what it might be and then through experience through the path one can come to understand directly what what the word is and and, and the importance of it so from I, that perspective okay yeah say, say something. I will never try to teach you how to call the word in I will teach you how to love or you may go too directly to the partner that is of a different alignment energy. It's not exact wholeness. It's light and you can channel it and it sounds divine and it speaks divine and it says the good things, but it's not exact. But love manifests exact wholeness and through the wholeness you download naturally the ethic of sound and light and love as a manifest goodness. The, so therefore, we, we have to go to the we have to go to the love. Yes. I mean, we have to get to that first. Sounds like the simple stage, but it's easiest at the beginning, the very first stage. Then it all go back to unity uh -huh. before you decide to judge it. That's the very first stage. We'll just reminisce there though, because on the first stage, all else comes through if you've done the first stage. The stages are just natural without having given over to the facts of this is. You can't even arrange yourself to be excited without finding out what, what <laughs> how, when, why, the reason for being. Can you maybe elaborate a little more on the first stage? Because no, that I seems to be the, the most one. important. I think that's one. the one that's exactly right for all humanity. The first stage is the stage of giving everything you're seeing, hearing, thinking, believing, feeling, remembering on through you to a higher, maybe you could call it a higher word, a higher truth before you try to grab what does that mean, it's best to say, let this be clear of over choosing what the way it is that I want it to be. And when it's like that, then you can go to the next natural stage of well then, what to do, what, what, how, naturally, what shall I know naturally, about works. this that's present here. That'll rise that naturally. just naturally rises. And if you're really inquiring fully, believing in it, you can't help but get excited and enthused to find out what the answer is. And the third stage is naturally the will to find out the yes, let's go past my narrow mind the way I was fixated. Let's do that. Let me do that. And then the next natural stage is surrender. You just open up to find it. And then you're downloadable, fifth stage, downloadable, sixth stage. You now know what to do. You are now owning it. It's embodied. So the sixth stage would be practically what? Since you are it. Service. You just naturally <clears throat> work it out. You write it, you do it, you practice it. It goes into your way of surveying the next piece of this moment, you just put yourself to good use. When we get up to the next stage, it's a shallow mind that we're going to go back into and see if we can ourselves pull out the concrete stuff, the old stuff, the things we're resisting the things we're denouncing, the memory wagon, and say, I so want this done. I'm willing to take a look at all my crap, all 
my beliefs, all my wish life, bring it up, and let's see about changing that out, sending it on to the higher, actually love, to open up, even perhaps to fructify something that we've missed before, to give us some taste of why we went through all that. The seventh stage is like a psychology time. We can't get to, this, to that time of understanding yourself and your previous time until you're really right with the energy of finding out the secrets and becoming the answer of those secrets enough to not divide again when you get hit by a scrawny memory of a fear of your not being enough, or a relative who hated you, you know, all of those things that can come up at the seventh stage start to come up. And they'll come up even on their own <laughs> when you're kind of full of the means to release the old, the old comes up. In spite of yourself, <laughs> it'll come up. Isn't it that at that stage, that's the only stage where it's possible to actually get rid of it? Right. Yeah, be, not be, even before, possible that, before you're, that, you're not ready. You'll just circle around. So no amount of psychologizing you earlier on it. is going to finish anything. Mm -hmm. Is that right? True. It does seem, though, that psychology does maybe is able to sort of somehow modify maybe some of the things mm -hmm. that have gone right before that. Mm -hmm. But the only way, it actually must go through some of these stages easily, even if they're just a tepid version of them, to go, oh, that's why I drew my grandfather's style of energy in. Mm -hmm. you go, look, but you have to want to know what good or what tool comes with this. You have to be curious enough, excited enough to find out, open enough to heal, interested enough to become an answer, very curious about being this answer and seeing if you can use it to to believe in your entry into the world now <laughs> as partner to whatever the world needs now. And is this a love energy that comes in that's able to somehow purgate one, you know, to somehow to... Purgate. Because okay. that's, that's, that's yeah. in the Christian mystical tradition, that's the stage of purgation. Yeah, I yeah, that. purgatory. I, I never came across that. Other part of the word, purgate. So it's it's like a love energy. It's that when you get when you get good because you always have to start again at forgiveness. When you get good at love being the support for forgiveness, absolutely true. Forgiveness is the first stage. Mm -hmm. It also writes all the other stages, both spellings. <laughs> it it causes them and it corrects them to be in their fuller value. So you're even more excited to find out the cause and effect of things that don't victimize you or purgate you anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's the seventh stage is hard to migrate into by yourself. What's the seventh stage again? Seventh After the sixth, stage. you actually have your demons come up, your issues come up, your, your realizations are such that you also know you really can deliver these past mischiefs from your cause and effect walk in life. And I always say this is the longest lasting stage because no matter how many you seem to bring up, here comes some more. All the ways you were excitable or got judgmental, criticize yourself and us, they come up. This could be, it seems, a dark night of the soul stage. Not could yet. It? Not yet? Not yet. Um, but this, it seems like at every stage stuff comes up. Once one starts to get quiet. No. no. In my experience, once I start to get quiet, <clears throat> just be present. Stuff starts coming up. Yes, you if you if you really allow yourself to quietly become present, you went through. Oh, 
the first, first, second, oh. third, fourth stage of Asian now starting to open to answer. You probably put yourself into a play of whatever shall be, let it serve through me. So you're already standing at the seventh stage, and up they come, mm -hmm. and they come. Interesting. So they so have you to move quickly through the stages in quick. seconds when you're really bountifully sure this is what you're out for to do. <laughs> If you're ready yeah, for it, you could go to the, really? All the way to the anointed purpose, mm -hmm. which happens at the ninth stage. The anointed, so we're talking about? Well, let's just say, once your ego driven no longer, the ego leaving at the eighth stage, and just before the eighth stage, you do go through the horrors of, what if I'm not enough? Then you have to go back through all the stages again and again and again uh -huh. until you're clear enough to have no reason to hold on to me, my small self, and I. <laughs> and when that happens, you go, oh, oh. And it's so, such an oh that the need to self feed, self analyze, self cure, self pull down from our temperament, <coughs> it all sifts away and we're nude for a moment. It's almost like silence then. Nothing to do, nothing to be, nothing to de descend to and fix. It's the last gate. You know, it's like a gate there before you ascend from matter to spirit descending. What is open enough to reflect the thoroughfare of what love shall bring to it, and that's the anointing. You become what love shall see to to it. Very holy age. Not bad <laughs> stuff. That starts to pop in. <sighs> so, in, in one that's gone to the seventh, eighth stage, really going to it, because I mean, if you keep going and going and going to it, before, isn't it possible to, if, um, what I'm trying to get at is like, is there, um, I'm assuming in your case, you've gotten to the eighth stage. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like a sort of a final thing, like there's a, there's a final thing. You know, it you're is, kind you, don't, of always, you, don't, you don't repeat it. You don't repeat that. So no. you're in that stage, just always. Yes. Because in a way, at the eighth stage, it's all, cleansing, moving, shifting, becoming answers, it's all at the same moment. There's no, there's no stare, there's no delivery, there's just, God's an ongoing flourishing there without the mind eye getting in the way. As, as much as it could, there's still a mind eye, there's still a person toiling in a body, but it's not a derivative of I made for me to my known self be true, uh -huh. <laughs> left at that, at that pain-free zone of no reason to say I without the dignity of putting all that is first. Uh -huh. It feels like this, it's a transparency, it's a stage of transparency too, like you're able to see mm -hmm. ego more transparently instead of so soggy yeah. by being in it. There's very little need to experience anything, so ego is kind of vanished. Uh -huh. There's um, ways that you have nerve memories of keeping your hand off the hot plate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah. It's not like you forget all your knowledge. Or any <laughs> you don't forget anything. You really actually get brilliant then. I'm very smart now. <laughs> it was very dumb before. <laughs> <laughs> so, what makes it the difference then? What what makes it permanent? I mean, uh, what's the word? It, I mean, because it is possible to, to have moments of um, of enlightenment like this, right? Without without being permanent. I that mean, would be the fifth stage before you become the answer, okay. where you go, oh, uh, you know, that surrender just before that. Of, Almost no reason to resume naivete, uh -huh. just openness to what is. That's often the most we need to move through, just those first fours or six working orders of coming to the answer, dying it out, and self comes up, we forgive it again. The seventh stage.
stage, you have to be fairly masterful to not forget and get stuck in here are my demons and think that you've gone backwards. I used to call that the shaman stage because you have to be fairly capable of holding your dignity so you can exorcise those negatives without them dragging you down. So it's like keeping your center while it's all happening. Definitely. And is, is uh, I keep coming up, I'm sorry, with this permanency thing. Is this, is, is the A stage then the stage where it becomes permanent? Not, uh, it, there's not a word like that. Okay. You're, or just, like not, you're just not always. reflecting on your personality as the one you want to go back and fix or serve. Uh -huh. You're just not wanting to do that. You just don't, just don't have do it. it to do. Uh -huh. And as stuff comes up, if you look at me sideways and I realize I haven't combed my mind properly and I have a tangle that goes fussing, right? I go in there and straighten it out and get back to talking. Oh, so there's still <laughs> some left over. Right? Well, there's always the gene stream. There's always uh -huh. stuff that will stir, but you don't have ego reason to go in and fear about it, deny it. I see. Uh, feel ruined by it. Make a, make a story out of it. distracted by it. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> was it radical when you get to that stage? Is it like a radical shift in perception of the world? I'm not yourself? sure. I'm pretty sure that I've been coming in and staying alert to what I am and what I have understand to be available to me for a lifetime. Pretty sure we're fairly slow to wake up here. I'm slowest. <laughs> I love I love years ago making a joke when people would call, call us up an old soul or something at the beginning we'd say wow that sounds pretty cool and then when you look again we're still in this equipment still having things happen and you realize maybe we're the guy sitting in the back of the classroom with this funny little dunce hat <laughs> on our head, we still haven't gotten it, so being a girl soul may be such uh, <laughs> kind of a question mark, <laughs> but that's just me playing. So maybe we can just bring the word back into this just for, for an ending to, for this particular one? Do you mind if I interrupt and you read back into the last sentence of don't rush. Don't slow down. Don't hold. Don't worry. Stay alignable by loves working in you. Continue to envelop the moment as best you can with a state of alertness and defying all odds be God's nature is love. That might be a good place to stop. For That's this. a wonderful place. <laughs> That'll work. Although there's lots more. Well, I want to thank you from Presence Dialogues. My name is Joe Diamo, and my guest again is Anam. And you can access her website at uh, theheartgate.org and find out more about this fascinating person. Thank you. Mm -hmm.